Uh, Ray Brown joined the company in uh, 1953 when I was 17. Uh, I'd attended the Mid Essex Technical School in Chelmsford and uh, joined Marconi's as an apprentice in uh, 1953. My father was already uh, worked in Marconi, he was an uh, uh, engineer in the maintenance department. <coughs> he had joined the army in the First World War when he was 16, said he was 18 I believe, and he went through that. After he left that he, uh, he, be, he was a blacksmith, he came to Marconi and worked in the maintenance department for, uh, well, if, until he actually died. Um, I uh, went to the Mid-Essex Technical School in Chelmsford. When I, when after I became, became an apprentice in 1953, I was sent to the Mid-Essex Technical College, which I attended an, over a period of about uh, 10 to 12 years. And during which time I managed to, with a bit of, bit of effort, to obtain uh, three high national certificates, which uh, was, uh, in my view, quite an achievement in those days. Um, I completed my apprenticeship. After I completed my apprenticeship, which was five years, uh, during which time I'd gone to the college, as I just said, um, I was transferred into the, one of the design offices, the one at Rittle actually, um, and I remained in the design office, going through various departments at uh, New Street and uh, Great Baddo. Became um, uh, manager of the radar design office, and uh, ultimately I became manager of uh, um, the design office of, through the whole of the Marconi company, and uh, which I remained I re till I was. Uh, I, I was at Marconi's for 44 years. I retired when I was uh, 60, uh, about 63, I think, 64. Um, uh, that, during which time, um, I would say, I was finished up as manager of the design department for the whole of the company, um, which I enjoyed very much. And the main thing was I had a really uh, nice set of um, people I worked with. Uh, people were very... Uh, uh, good at their job actually I was going to say looking for better words actually but um, uh, it, it was a very enjoyable period I think I chose the right thing to go into the design office but um, uh, it was uh, it was quite an experience for me well obviously I started off as a as a uh, ordinary draftsman I went through these various uh, grades of draftsman uh, then became a uh, designer uh, I finished up as being uh, um, designer of uh, radar division, the design office, and ultimately um, I progressed to this state where, where the design offices were all amal amalgamated and uh, I became manager of what was known as manager of administration of the Marconi uh, design offices. Um, You've obviously seen the, the rise and fall of Marconi because radar Certainly the name doesn't exist anymore, Marconi. No, 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 no. Is it still exist in some form or another? To my knowledge, I've always tried to find this out because I'm still friend, friendly with some... Uh, in fact, I had a chap stay last week um, who were, sort of had senior positions in the Mar Marconi electronic department, you know, was chief of, uh, chief of engineering, for example. And uh, they, they, we spoke a short time about uh, Marconi's... Uh, when he came down last week, and he said, uh, um, he says Marconi just does not exist anymore at all. Because I was asking about different buildings, who worked there, and he says Marconi just does not exist. Which to me is a shame because uh, um, when I uh, sort of uh, was going to college in Chelmsford, when I was an apprentice, Marconi's was the place to work. And I think they had done a survey. This is the the people who deal with education in the ministry um, had, uh, de had de decided that of all the engineering companies in, G in Great Britain, the top one for engineering training was in fact uh, a Ford Motor Company. They had very big des design offices. And uh, Marconi, you know, to its credit, was second. Who 
Who do we rely on for radar today? Do, do we import Chinese radar? Pass. Where does our radar Pass. Go? Pass. Uh, I imagine there's still a lot of Marconi uh, civil radars around at different airports, you know, for holiday travel and things like that, but I wouldn't know. I just would not know. Uh, I left the company um, about 94, I think, 90, 94, something like that. And was it still riding high? Oh, yes, in those days it was still. So after but, you retired, you've seen the shares and the whole company collapse? Yeah, basically, yeah, yes. It's, it's certainly not uh, uh, as uh, I, I knew it, you know. And my father was, I was, I was still an apprentice when my father died, you know. He, he died when I was about 18, you know, but, um, and, uh, which was a bit of a blow as we worked in the same sort of, we was both at New Street then actually. But well, I had sort of worked at Baddo, Rittle, New Street, you know, all the different places, you know. So, so it was a, and I don't think, personally in my view, I don't think you could possibly have had a better apprenticeship than uh, what the Marconi one was. It was very, very well uh, organised, well controlled, and the courses they put you on were the correct ones, you know, in my view anyway. And now I found it a great asset. Uh, the best is one best decision I've ever made, I think, joining Marconi as an apprentice. And the main thing is, of course, I got accepted after an exam, which was, which would have been a bit worrying. So I don't know where I'd, I'd have finished up if I'd have failed that, you see. But, but they were a bit selective in regarding what schools you'd been to, you see, which, which obviously did help. So really, you're stepping into the past when you oh, step yeah. here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Your father didn't work at Hall Street ever, did he? <laughs> not, not Hall Street. I don't know when Hall Street was actually working. Closed in 1912. Oh no, no, no. He, 1912. He, he'd have been 14 then because he joined the army First World War at 16, and, uh, and he did a great job there as well. Actually. Did his father work for Marconi? No, I think his father was in fact. Uh, as it seems to run in there to both sides of my family, mothers and fathers, blacksmiths, they were blacksmiths. Generally the for blacksmiths, um, uh, for brewers, you know, where you had the horses as well as all the general black, blacksmithing, blacksmithing work. But uh, no, they were very good. Lovely, we'll love it to hear from you. What do you think about our little show here? Because you're stepping back in time. I am indeed. Well, the strange thing was my youngest daughter, she, she wanted me to go to uh, something yesterday, which was down at, as far as I'm aware, New Street. And because I'd got visitors coming, I couldn't. couldn't. It was here. It was here, was it? Was it? Here. Oh, so I haven't missed All anything. All the meetings are being, that was the Dave Monk. Uh, the radio ah, broadcaster. So I have he was speaking here. We've, don't worry, we've got another five talks here, so you must come. Well, I, I was going. To, I was told to ask the lady. I think you might have said, ask the lady for a list of, you know, what was on. Lovely. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.